Hello there, I'm Mikko from the Body of Christ, and welcome to another Leadership Reflection. Last time we talked about active listening, which is a very important topic, and I hope you uh, check that, that out first. This is a direct continuation of this topic. Today I want to share to you about um, a little bit about gap leadership, and I assume you have some idea about that. I'm not going to go into depth into explaining that right here. Um, but gap leadership and how it relates to active listening. And one of the most important uh, principles in gap leadership is that whenever you notice a gap, and that assumes that you're operating in a leadership position and that you're conscious of the view, uh, vision, that you're in correctly positioned. Otherwise, this just doesn't work. But assuming that you notice a gap over here, that something's not leading to the goals that you had in mind. Some things, if left untended, may lead to a disaster going further on. What do you do when you notice this? Will you continue with the meeting? Because you have, of course, work to do. You have the course to finish. You have the video to finish. You have lunch to make. You know, can you afford to quit? That, what you're doing, stop and deal with this issue, or will you, will you do it later? Well, at least the thought proposed in this teaching we watched, and which I would see is wisdom, is deal with it right away. Stop whatever you're doing and deal with that issue then and there. And if you have many people around, even better, because then you can do shared learning, meaning that you rebuke one person and five people get the edification for it. So five people's increase for the cost of one rebuke. Pretty good, right? <laughs> anyway, not the typical way it is done, but it is extremely effective way. So dealing it with it then and there. And one of the important things as a background for this is your relation, relationship with your team and with your people around you. Also, the expectations that you have set up, which connects to the culture that's in your organization or your family or your, you know, relationships, whatever. You know, it doesn't have to be a, uh, like a official organization. It doesn't have to be a government slave organization. Organization just means something that's organized. And family certainly is organized when it's done well. Anyway, these are the foundation stones in your ability to deliver that correction or rebuke or redirection. Because in this case, you notice the gap, what do you want to do? You want to correct co the course so that the gap gets corrected and you get back on track and you start moving ahead again. And I uh, do a little sidestep here in terms of topic, but this lack of gap leadership often shows us that in meetings, while we have a leader in name, we many times don't have an active leader because we see, see that mm, that maybe wasn't so right, even from a follower position, but nothing happens. That's just business as usual, continue the work. Nobody's doing the gap leadership or the conversation gets like to a very different topic than we were supposed to do. Nobody does anything. Or maybe you feel anxious and frustrated, but you don't find the courage to speak out, out about it or you feel like it's not your job to do it. Anyway, that shows that that meeting is lacking a leader. But that's a side issue again. but. Keep that in mind, anyway. But um, what does this have to do with active listening? Uh, first of all, like we discussed last time, major part in active listening is your state. Or, and you have to be hearing and consciously connected both to God and to the people you're listening to. You have to try to understand, actively try to understand, actively try to make the connections, actively try to make the best use of the knowledge that just given you. 
And really healthy understanding helps in that. If you just understand that what this other person is saying right now and right there, or what he's not saying because he's not asked to say or he's not given the opportunity to say that, is extremely valuable wisdom that God has placed in them for you to discover. And what may have taken like decades of experience to come to, to that understanding and really giving it the value that it deserves, wisdom around you. Like you're not supposed to be the wisest man in the room, really. If you can just be the most humble or most interested in other person's wisdom, you can get more wisdom than anyone, any single person can get just by valuing what God has placed in other people, their giftings, their wisdom, their understanding, their experiences, their perspective to life. And if you can just throw that out, how much more equipped, how much better equipped are you to build the kingdom of God afterwards? Plus, how much more valuable they do feel and find themselves with you. So focus is just... Anyway. Uh, so state, really, really important. So again, how this relates to gap leadership is that from that state, you're like, you're like a hawk you're looking for the prey and you're looking for anything that might be of use for the building of the kingdom of God or something that might be a disaster if left untended. So you watch with a careful eye everything that you can see. You watch body language, you watch the tone of voice, you watch what they're saying, watching the topics, watching what they're interested about, you're watching their character. You're always watching, hey, which of these people could I recruit for building the kingdom of God? What would they have to offer? Where could they most benefit the kingdom of God? What's their calling? You know, that requires like actively being there and and listening, looking, observing, being present. And while that is demanding, that is also very rewarding. And once you notice something, not just being like, oh, like if you're the hawk, you know, oh, there's the mouse. Cool, there's the mouse. No, 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 that's not what hawk do. At least if they want to get results, what they do is, oh, there's the mouse. You know, you go and you get the mouse and you <laughs> build your success from there or the success of the kingdom of God from there. But you take on the opportunities. And that's why it's important when you notice something to act on it, to stop, to go for it and to make the best from that situation. And that involves going into action. And in this state, really, in this washing state, if you're doing it correctly, you're always ready to act. And I believe it is uh, what God is really wanting from us in the long run. If we want to be good vessels to watch. Like often it says, like, you know, if you're, if you're a good servant, you're always like watching. What, what does God want? Or what would he want to do here? Uh, what's his thoughts over here? Like listening, watching. Keeping an eye on in case there's some inclination. Here's the situation. Go for it. Say this. Do this. Often it's a still small voice. Or like it's like it's those who have the ear to hear. And those who are in that state to go for it. And God doesn't want to waste his ideas, his time, his thoughts. In someone who's like, that's an interesting thought. Oh, what should you eat today? Oh, nice day, isn't it? Yeah, you just shared with me the meaning of life or the most important thing to act during the next five minutes. But I mean, it's, it's, it's nice weather. You know? What kind of me message is that giving? It's like, you're saying it's nice. But you're acting on the contrary. That's not that's not listening to God or listening to anyone. Like that's so rude. But that so often happens. We get some understand not even understanding, but get some knowledge or information 
and we think, oh, okay, I know it. Like, let's say the house is burning. I didn't know it. Then my wife comes there and, oh, the house is burning. I'm like, okay, sounds good. Oh, sounds really horrible. Yeah. And then I just continue. Like, did I listen? Well, if I, if I did listen, I had something wrong in my brain. That would need to be followed through with action, you know? Or maybe we didn't do something about it. Or maybe I need to ask some follow-up questions. So where is the fire? You know, whatever. <laughs> but it's... it's um, there's a lot of hypocrisy here. You see? How we think we know when we haven't acted. But there's, there's a big difference between... Yeah, I know. Okay, cool. And, oh, really? Let's go. You know? Mm. I guess it's as simple as that, but it, it's it's um, it's really strange and interesting how that still goes on. But, again, if you haven't done so, I would watch you, sorry, recommend you to watch that leadership reflection or active listening and to get more into depth concerning that state which we were talking about, that active listening state and acting state, being ready to move, being ready to stop whatever you're doing and move. So I hope you found this edifying and I hope this raised some thoughts for you. And it would be very interesting to hear your thoughts in the comments. I have a very hard time asking those specific follow-up questions in this context because I cannot see you directly. But if you make yourself known, let's have a conversation. Let's try to find more into this topic because there's a lot more. Just, just try and get into it. Anyway, see you next time.